Hey, welcome back. If this is your first time, my name is Dan and I love making everyday technology easy. I worked at Apple for 19 years and now I am in full-time ministry. Do you use your digital assistant enough? Meaning, do you use enough. Now, in this video, I want to show you my top five ways that I become more productive using. Now, in this video, I probably will be saying this word quite a bit, um, but I don't want to activate your device. So I will be muting myself every time I say the word. And then hopefully that won't be too annoying. Now, I will include chapter markers below so you can definitely skip ahead to maybe the the area that you want to kind of watch and maybe rewatch. I am going to take this video a little bit slower uh, because I realize from the feedback that I've received that many of you that are watching this, um, by the way, thank you so much for the support. We've crossed over 7,000 subs on our way to 10,000. If you're watching this and you haven't considered subscribing yet, let me challenge you, watch two or three of my videos. And if you like what you see, man, join the community. I, I do this for fun. I do it out of the passion. I love, again, making everyday technology easy and showing people how to use their devices even in a more productive way. Um, but I will include chapter markers below. Uh, so feel free to skip uh, along, but I will slow it down just a bit so that you can also try while you're watching this, maybe pause the video, you can try it on your device and kind of go back and forth. All right, with that being said, I'm going to give you my top five ways that I use in a more productive way. And I'm going to do this in a, in a backward setting. I'm going to leave uh, number one for last. And I even have a bonus one uh, that might surprise you just a bit. So hang on tight. I promise this video won't be too, too long. So starting off on number five, I want to start off with the basic settings. Many people still uh, don't realize that your digital assistant can do things like open applications for you. Uh, for example, open up the app store. And then just like that, the digital assistant will open up that particular app. So maybe you have a specific app that you're, you know, you're constantly using. Maybe your phone is off on your desk or maybe in the kitchen. Maybe you're cooking. Maybe you're making a recipe and you have that recipe on a note or maybe there's a specific app that you use for cooking. You can quite easily say, hey, digital assistant, open that particular app. Pretty, pretty cool. But you can also have your digital assistant do basic commands on your system settings. For example, I can say, turn off my Bluetooth. And my digital assistant will open up my settings and go ahead and turn off my Bluetooth. I'm going to go ahead and turn that back on. And as you can see, my device may, uh, my settings may look a little bit different. I am running iOS 26, the developer version. That basically means the next version of Apple's operating system. It is publicly out, but it's very, very buggy. It'll officially come out in the fall. So I'm doing all the testing right now. Um, I also made a quick video on it. If you want to check that out, I'll link it up above. So I love uh, tip number five again. I love using my digital assistant to do basic commands as open applications, adjust system settings. You can even have it uh, turn off or restart your device, especially those moments where your hands are just a little bit tied up. Tip number five. Moving on, tip number four is making phone calls, especially if you have your AirPods on. This is, it goes to the next level. <clears throat> but making phone calls is pretty awesome. And what many people don't realize, and I use this feature a lot, especially if I'm working around the house, I'm in my office, I'm, I'm just, my hands are tied and I don't have my AirPods with me, I'll have my digital assistant call somebody on speaker. So for this example, I'm going to have it call uh, somebody that you may know. Call Tim Cook on speaker. And as you can see, it's calling a Tim. I'm going to hang up because it's a little early there on the West Coast right now. But it'll call that individual on speaker. Um, very, very cool. You can also 
adjust who you call. For example, if you have family members, you can start um, relating the contacts to specific um, uh, relationships. Like for example, many people don't know this, that Tim Cook is actually my brother. So I'm going to go ahead and tell my digital assistant to identify Tim as my brother. Tim is my brother. And as you can see, it brought up Tim's contact and it went ahead and said, hey, you know, do you, and it's still recording me by the way. So it brought up my contact and it's saying, so this contact is your brother, it's your wife, it's your cousin, it's your mother-in-law. Do we call our mother-in-laws? You better call your mother-in-law. But you can associate family members that way whenever you say, hey, digital assistant, call my wife, call my, my brother, my sister, my mom, it'll automatically know who you are calling. Now, I do wanna take a quick pause and I will tell you this. The more you use your digital assistant, the better A, you're gonna get at it and the better the 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 context of the conversations will get. In other words, I have definitely noticed that the more I use my digital assistant, it's almost like a relationship, right? You're kind of getting to know each other. You're working better together. Again, making yourself more productive. Another cool tip is you can also go into your contacts and you can assign a phonetic name. So like, for example, if I just go ahead in here and I'll go to contacts, or I'll go to Tim's contact here. And if I go to info, so I'm basically just bringing up my contact. I can go in here, I can tap on edit, the top right hand corner. And obviously I can add additional phone numbers, emails, I can add pronouns, I can add ringtones, text tones, you name it, URLs, if maybe this is a business. But you can definitely add um, phonetics. So if I go ahead and down here and I add add field, I can go in here and say, you know what, here is the phonetic first name. Maybe, you know, you have a, a family member that they are, that their name is, let's say, Lewis, um, but maybe it is spelled differently and they want to be pronounced as Louise, right? Or something to that, to that nature. You can go in there and spell the name phonetically. That way your digital assistant will understand that name next time and even pronounce it back to you as well. Now, tip number three, this is one of my favorites. Um, I'm going to go here to my alarms, hundreds of alarms, and, and we are just kind of like not deleting. Well, did you know that you can use your digital assistant to clear all of your alarms just by saying it? So for example, delete all of my alarms. It says, are you sure? I'm going to say yes. And just like that, all of my alarms are gone. Bet you didn't know that one. That's tip number three. Now, for tip number two, I'm going to go ahead and use this one, um, and it's Find My. Now, there are many ways to find your device. Uh, let's say you have uh, your Apple Watch, and I think, and I've shown you this before, where you can always swipe up on your Apple Watch, and you can ping your device no matter where you're at, and it, it'll it'll buzz on you here. I showed you that if you long press the Find My on your Apple Watch, um, it'll actually flash the light. So, like, let's say if you left your phone in a in a fell through the couch, it, it went somewhere. It'll actually flash the light behind you. But sometimes, or maybe you don't have an Apple Watch, and your phone is somewhere in your messy office that you call a YouTube studio. Maybe you dropped it in the couch. Maybe it's somewhere. One of the kids left it somewhere. Even if your phone is locked, so I'm going to go ahead and lock my screen there. I can say digital assistant, find my device. Watch. Find my phone. And then just like that, it has recognized your iPhone 15 Pro Max. It'll start identifying where my phone is. Pinging your iPhone 15 Pro Max now. And there it goes. It's actually pinging my device, as you can tell there on the monitor. Again, many people, you know, I, like 
many people don't know that my wife, she, she, one of the kids will maybe take the phone and, and leave it somewhere where she doesn't know. And maybe she left her Apple watch, or maybe her Apple watch is on the nightstand charging. And she's like, I can't find my phone. I'm like, just, just say it out loud, especially if you're home, if you're in the car. Very, very cool to find your device using your digital assistant. Find my. That is tip number two. Now, tip number one, probably my most used feature in making my life just even more productive with my digital assistant, it's creating reminders that are location-based. So for instance, I, I forget things. So and my wife will tell me, hey, make sure that you are purchasing milk or buying milk and eggs and bread when you get to your to the grocery stores for us as Publix. So I'm just going to use my digital assistant to remind me to buy milk when I get to my favorite grocery stores. Now, truth be told, I have already, just because I use this feature a lot, especially with my notes, I, I had a, 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 I did a video on how to be more productive using Apple Notes. That's also, I'll link it up above if I, if I remember. If not, link it down below for sure. So I've identified my home grocery store. Very easy to do. Um, in your contacts, but I'm going to tell my digital assistant to remind me to purchase milk when I get there. Watch. Remind me to buy milk when I get to the grocery store. And just like that, it'll say, it'll give me a, a reminder for my family list to purchase milk when I arrive at Publix. Same is true if I say, you know, hey, digital assistant, remind me when I leave home to drop off the mail at the post office or to call my wife or to turn off the, the front porch light. You can use your digital assistant to audibly just create these reminders. And again, you're just getting faster. And I tell you, if you, if you don't have a pair of, of AirPods, AirPod Pros, phenomenal. The response is even so much better. You don't have to say, hey, digital assistant, you can just naturally talk. And I guess that is a bonus, a bonus tip. You know, don't speak like a robot to your digital assistant. The more native you can be with it, the more, um, the, the easier you're, you're, you're wanting to use your digital assistant will be. Now, I will give you my bonus if you stayed all the way to the end. And especially if you're a Harry Potter fan. If you're a Harry Potter fan, drop me down a comment below and we'll, we'll do this together. But did you know that you can say Lumas and it turns on your flashlight? Did you know that? And you can also say, hey, Knox, and it turns off your flashlight. Bet you didn't know that one. Hey, friends, thank you so much for staying to the end. Do me a favor because I want to learn more about the way that you use your digital assistant. If any of these were new, let me know down below. If you knew all of these, but you know a couple more that I did not mention, drop it down below because I would love to learn how to use my digital assistant even more as well again and thank you guys so much for the support like the video subscribe we're trying to get to that 10k um, measure but more than that i, I want to just again pause and say thank you guys i've received so many well wishes and great comments on these videos that just really make uh it all worth for me i hope you enjoyed the video if you haven't seen any of my other videos i'm going to drop one here for you check that video out it will make you more productive until next time peace